everyone welcome back to another video i am cheryl here at the made on sunday studio and i talk all about branding design and creative entrepreneurship here so if those are topics of any interest to you then be sure to subscribe to follow along now in today's video i wanted to talk about skillshare I don't know if you saw, but I already created two videos in the last couple of weeks um, about Skillshare. The first one being about my personal experience of teaching for the first time specifically on Skillshare. And then the second video is all about how much I made in the first two months of teaching on Skillshare. But in today's video, I really wanted to go a little bit deeper. I uh, sent like a little question box on my Instagram and asked you guys what your burning questions are on becoming a teacher on Skillshare and so today I'm going to be answering all of those frequently asked questions and kind of diving deeper into actually how to become a teacher on Skillshare. All right so I'm going to get into the questions. I have my questions here on the side. Very first question is who can teach on Skillshare? Now, really anyone, to be honest, can teach on Skillshare. It is an open platform just like YouTube where practically anybody can essentially create an account and upload a course and publish it pretty much immediately, just like you would on YouTube. There's no like, you know, application or anything really that uh, guards you from publishing a class on Skillshare. You do not need to be a professional or an expert or any sort like that. Um, but if you have a skill to teach, then you can pretty much upload a class on Skillshare. If you feel like you do not have any skills and you're contemplating whether you can actually be a Skillshare teacher or not, then I would actually highly recommend you to just go check out Skillshare now. I'm gonna add the links um, to my description below um, and you can sign up for my 30 day free trial and you get basically access to the whole database of Skillshare. Um, and for 30 days, you can basically start doing some research. Go on Skillshare, check out the different classes that are available. Um, I think you'd be surprised by the variety of classes and the things that you you could be teaching. Um, I think the first time someone's creating a course, they're thinking of something like super, super big and like very complicated. Um, and I really don't think it needs to be complicated. Um, Skillshare really likes shorter classes. Classes are, are like 20 minutes to um, an hour long. And um, it can be super small thing, like a, a, a quick process or a quick technique that you're teaching in one class. Um, see it as teaching a, a small part of a skill as opposed to like um, a huge process or something like that. Uh, there are definitely classes that are longer as well, um, but definitely don't be intimidated that, by that. Go check out the database and you might be surprised by the variety of classes um, and skills that you might be able to add to the platform. All right, next question is, how much does it actually cost to teach on Skillshare? Now, good news, it is completely free to be a Skillshare teacher. Um, you actually don't even need the premium uh, Skillshare membership to teach. You can basically just open up a free account, which uh, only allows you access to watch all of the trailers on, uh, on Skillshare. And then with that account, you can publish your class. And even once you start making money, you don't pay a cent um, to Skillshare in order to become a teacher and publish a class. All right, next question is, are there any quality standards for teachers proposing their classes on the platform? Um, this question, okay, first off is you don't actually need to propose your topic to Skillshare. Um, it's an open platform, so basically you can go in there, uh, record your class, uh, upload it, publish it, and it would be live immediately, basically. Uh, but after you publish your class, um, for the next, like, I think they say like 72 hours or 24 hours or something like that, they will review your class. And if there are any issues with your class, like um, you're teaching a topic that is, that 
you're not allowed to teach on Skillshare or um, if you are you know breaking any rules or guidelines of class quality or anything like that then they will reach out to let you know and they'll probably pull down your class or give you a strike or something like that um, so uh, that's the first part of a question the second part is there are actually uh, some guidelines. I'm just going to read off like some of the more important ones from their website. So the first one is there are actually restricted class topics that you're not allowed to teach. I think some of those include fitness and exercise, pet care, beauty and or medicine. Uh, so if you are planning to kind of um, teach a topic that is within a few of those topics that I mentioned, then you should definitely go in and read their guidelines just to make sure that um, your topic is, is going to be okay to be published on the Skillshare platform. Uh, next guideline is the class does need to be at least 10 minutes long. Um, and also every class needs to have an introduction video as well as a class project. So the introduction video are those class trailers that you see for every single class. Um, so those are usually around a minute to two minute long videos and that is like something that you have to create. So if you already created a class, let's say a course outside of Skillshare and you're planning to kind of upload that same class into Skillshare, then you want to, you want to make sure that you are um, filming that class introduction uh, the same way that most other Skillshare classes do it. Um, and the guidelines are all on the Skillshare platform on the website, so you can definitely go check it out. And I would just recommend making sure to stick to those guidelines. Uh, the other thing is you do have to have a class project. So if you already created a course and you want to re-upload that course into um, Skillshare, you need to make sure that you are uh, you know, somehow creating a class project out of that course. Um, so class project could be um, like if it's a drawing class, then, you know, you uh, really encourage your students to draw the same painting or whatever it might be. So definitely uh, make sure to include a class project. Um, I think the last guideline is just making sure that the audio and the video quality is like up to standard. Um, there are some more technical things that they require, like it needs to be at least 1080p. Um, if you've ever created any video content, then that's usually the uh, dimensions that you are um, and the quality of the video that are for most platforms like on YouTube um, and yeah just make sure that you you are not blurry make sure that the audio is good um, just very basic stuff um, if you go on Skillshare you'll probably see that the quality of classes on Skillshare are extremely high um, it really looks very very professional um, but Right now, I am filming with my iPhone and that's exactly how I film for my Skillshare classes too. So don't be intimidated by the quality standards. Um, you can definitely create really, really high quality uh, video even with just your smartphone. If you wanna see more uh, guidelines, like the full list of the class guidelines, then definitely go check out the description below. I'll put the link to the Skillshare class guidelines uh, page for you to read over. All right, next question is, are there specific class topics that are more successful on Skillshare? Um, and the short answer to that is probably a yes. There is like a general theme going on on Skillshare, like generally classes are about creativity, art, design, freelance, um, entrepreneurship, uh, you know, painting, drawing, that kind of stuff, and also business classes and lifestyle classes, actually. So um, there's definitely a lot of different types of topics that could fit in uh, in those kind of not topics that I just mentioned. Um, but I definitely, again, recommend you to just hop onto Skillshare. Let's say you wanna teach a specific class topic and you're not really sure if that would be successful on Skillshare. I would just recommend going into Skillshare, searching for that specific topic, be as general as possible, and then see what comes up. If there are absolutely no classes on it, then you might want to take that as a red flag a little bit and be like, hmm, 
Is there a reason why that class is not on Skillshare already? Is it because it's restricted? or maybe because there's no audience for it. So you just want to be mindful of that. The actually the best types of topics that work well on Skillshare are the ones that are already successful on Skillshare, but maybe need some work. Um, let's say it's a topic that, you know, you look into it and there are like three classes that look decent, that have a lot of students in it. You go into it and, you know, read the reviews, uh, watch the class, see if there's any improvements that you can add to the topic, whether it is content wise, quality wise, production wise, um, anything like that to, to just kind of start brainstorming how you can improve uh, that class with your own unique style. And that's usually the best way to pick a topic that has potential success on Skillshare. All right, next question is, how much do you get paid as a teacher? Well, this question is a little bit complicated now because just as I was preparing for this video, uh, Skillshare actually reached out to all teachers and let us know that they are changing the payment scheme uh, as of October of 2022. So generally speaking, there are two ways to get paid on Skillshare. The first way is through royalties and the second way is through referrals. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about either of them, uh, right now because again it's changing on October so there's really no point talking about the old way of getting paid um, but generally speaking uh, the first one is royalties and that's uh, the minutes watched on your videos so you get paid by how many minutes you get watched um, and uh, so the more you know hours minutes watched on your videos the more you will get paid um, and then the second way is by referrals. So if you refer somebody to Skillshare to pay for a paid membership, then generally you would get a cut of that membership. Previously, it was 60% cut, which is quite a bit. Um, as of October, 2022 until the end of, uh, end of 2022, apparently they're changing it to 90%, which is mind blowing. I don't think that percentage is going to stay though. I think it's just for this transition period uh, at the end of 2022. But if you want to hop on the bandwagon of these amazing referral uh, payouts, 90% referral, that is really, really good. So um, maybe uh, get on the Skillshare train now. <laughs> uh, but generally speaking, um, I did some calculation and as of my first three months uh, of teaching on Skillshare, I get paid around seven cents per minute watched. So you can kind of do the math yourself to kind of like multiply that and see how much that will generally make you. Um, I don't know if that amount is going to change after these changes in the payment scheme. So uh, I'm very interested to see how this will change my uh, income from Skillshare moving forward. But if you want to see more in-depth look into how much I actually caught paid the first two months of teaching on Skillshare, then I highly recommend checking out that video that I filmed talking all about how much I made going through all my stats on the back end. I'm going to leave the link to the video in the description below. All right. Next question is, are all teachers getting paid equally okay juicy question um i think the short way of answering this is um yes um generally speaking you know as of right now before the change in the payment scheme um, the more minutes watched on your classes the more you would generally get paid um but I think the better question really to ask is, do all teachers get the same amount of exposure? Because um, obviously the more exposure you have, the better your classes will do in terms of watch time. And uh, if I were to answer the second question is whether all teachers have the same, you know, equal exposure, the answer is definitely no. Um, it, you know, Skillshare is really like any searchable third-party platform, just like YouTube, just like Instagram, just like any 
uh, like Pinterest, anywhere where it's search based to find you and your account, um, you're really heavily relying on an algorithm, SEO, um, uh, how much you're bringing into the platform. If you already have like, you know, an audience to begin with, then um, you can bring that audience in with you onto Skillshare. Um, the more consistent you are, the longer you work on something, um, the more it snowballs into the success that you're looking for. So I would say, so the answer is no, like, um, some teachers definitely get more exposure than others because of these different variables. Uh, how long they've been working on, how big their audience is, will definitely determine how well and successful your class does. All right, next question is, how much time does it take to actually create a class and is that time worth it? Um, so this one obviously just depends on uh, a lot of things, how long your class is, what topic you're teaching. It depends on what your experience is with creating video content and how uh, well versed you are in the content that you're planning to talk about, um, your editing experience, whether you're going to get help with it. So a lot of different variables obviously play, play into fact of how long it will take. Um, it took me generally about, um, one month to create that class. I would say maybe one week of that month, I actually spent most days working on it. Um, I think it took me one and a half days to film the whole class. Um, and my first class was three hours long. So that was definitely much longer class than uh, most classes on Skillshare. My second class, however, is only an hour long and it was actually very quick for me to create that class. I think it took me about two weeks to create that class. Um, so from beginning to end, like writing the scripts, uh, you know, filming it, editing it, adding the graphics in, creating the marketing plan, uh, I did the whole thing, you know, like email newsletters. I, I created a landing page. I had graphics and little animated things. Um, and so I did a lot for these classes. So it really depends on how much work you want to put into your class. Um, but generally speaking, is it worth the time that I put in? I definitely think so. It's totally worth it because let's just be real here. I think I am getting paid um, on Skillshare way more quickly and fairly than I have been on YouTube. And I've been on YouTube for two plus years now, and I'm just starting to make some more stable income from it. Whereas on Skillshare, I started making money like in the first month. Um, so there is a huge difference there. Um, I don't know if it's gonna last forever like that, uh, but so far I think it's definitely really worth it to uh, the time that I put in versus how much I actually get from it. All right, so the last question is, do you recommend other people to get into teaching on Skillshare? And I think it's pretty obvious by now, I am a huge advocate for Skillshare. I've been really, really enjoying my experience being a teacher. It's probably one of the most exciting things that I started this year for my business and I really highly recommend it to other people just to dabble into course creation and just try to see if it's something that you enjoy doing. Um, I realized that as I started teaching on Skillshare, how much I love teaching and how much I love creating courses. I mean, I've had a lot of practice because all of my YouTube videos are like little classes in itself. Um, and I think that's probably why I got into YouTube because I do love teaching. I have a background in teaching piano, like, 10 years ago and so I really enjoyed that aspect of being able to share knowledge and yeah I think Skillshare has definitely sparked that passion in me again and it's just made passive income really a truly viable option for me. So I'm just really, really happy about that and I'm excited. I'm excited to keep teaching on it and I definitely recommend if you have, you know, a little bit of editing experience, and even if you don't take a class on Skillshare, that's where I learn how to edit my videos. Um, if you have, you know, a topic that you're very passionate about and can talk forever about, 
then look into Skillshare and see if it's a topic that can be successful on the platform and then you know try it out try it out and let me know uh, how it goes because I'm so interested in seeing other new teachers on the platform and yeah it's just exciting try it just try it <laughs> all right and that is it for today I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did please give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos like that as I've said before, I've created two other Skillshare videos before. So if you're interested in seeing my personal experience teaching for the first time or about how much I made on Skillshare in the first two months and a behind the scenes look at my stats, then definitely go check out those videos. I'm going to link it in the description below. Um, by the way, if you wanted to check out my newest classes, um, I actually just recently launched my latest class called Etsy template shop, diversify your income with Canva templates. If you've seen any of my other videos on this channel, you know, I love using Canva and one of the very first passive income streams that I started for my business was to sell Canva templates on Etsy. So if you're interested in finally monetizing your designs on Canva and maybe start making some passive income for your business, then definitely go check out this class. I'm going to put more details on the class in the description below. You can check it out there. You can take my class with my 30 day free trial on Skillshare and pretty much take my class for free. So I'll see you in class. Bye. <laughs>